so this is the next card that we are going to be doing. So the very first step for this card is we're going to be doing this distressed background. So I have a piece of paper here. Um, this is a mixed media piece of paper. It needs to be, you need to use some cardstock that can handle some water. Uh, so you don't want to use regular cardstock. Mixed media works. You could use watercolor cardstock, something that's a little bit thicker, but that's meant to have a little bit of water put on it. So I have got Distress ink pads here and I've got them in both Oxide and the regular. I'm mixing the two. I've got Chip Sapphire in both kinds and Weathered Wood in both kinds. So these are the same colors that I used um, for the last card to do the watercolor painting. I'm trying to make the um, cards kind of coordinate with each other just because they're all part of the same class. So I'm pressing a little bit of each one down on my mat on the side here. And I'm going to mist them with water. Oh, this mister doesn't really want to mist too well. Very first step, I'm going to put my cardstock in this ink and then lift it up. If there's any sections that don't have ink on them, I'm just going to press them down. Now this is one of those techniques that you have a certain amount of control, but there's some things you just can't control. Now I'm using this heat tool to dry the ink. It needs to be about 80-90% dry, not 100% dry, but mostly. One second. We got it. So you can even just hear it. This one is a lot um, gentler than the other one. The other one is quite loud. This one I can actually talk over top of. The cardstock, even though it's meant for moisture it does curl but as it dries you'll notice it flattens right back out again so the reason i said it doesn't need to be 100 percent dry um, but like 80 90 percent is you don't want to take a piece of wet cardstock and start dabbing it into your ink you want to make sure it's mostly dry these two colors if we mix them together they're not going to create mud because obviously they're both blues but if you're say doing a background with like red and green or opposite colors on the color wheel you're going to end up with mud if you um, mix wet with wet so i'm just tapping them into those dots and then i'm going to dry it again and you keep repeating this process as much or as little as you want till you have a background that you like now you may notice that my piece of paper here is slightly bigger than the one on the card. And the reason for that is then when I'm done, I can pick out exactly what part I like best and just shave a quarter inch off of two sides. Like for instance, this side, this corner here, because there's no ink, maybe there's ink on it by the end and I love it, but I can cut some of it off. And obviously this technique, you can do it with any color. Um, I use them with distress pads because that is what these are for. Other ink pads may not react to the same way. This technique was created with these pads, so um, it works well together. And it's a perfect way to get just a blotchy mixed media background without needing a lot of tools or without having to say stamp an image or texture or whatnot. getting close to how I want it to be finished but before I do anything to this the background of this card I need to make sure it's absolutely a hundred percent dry just get a little bit more dots and you'll see how the ink just gets there gets less and less on my mat and it gets the dots get a little bit more um, tiny that's exactly what we're looking for So now I think I'm gonna put it this way on the card and put the point set in this area just because it's one of the darker areas. So I think I'm going to cut this corner off and then cut the top one off. But I'm gonna let this completely dry first and I'll see you in the next video. The next one video we're gonna be embossing and cutting out the poinsettia.